Hello, my friends, and welcome back to our exploration of the uh, weapon stories from Nier Automata to see what kind of themes we can quickly sparse out of them off the fly. We're going to jump right into it with the Spear of the Usurper, described as a spear used by a prince's double to murder his liege. Now, unfortunately, that's definitely a reference to the King of Facade because this is the spear that they used in the City of Facade from the original Nier. And hopefully that's not the king that we knew, but it, it probably is. Uh, in a distant kingdom there lived two princes. The son of the queen consort was clever of mind but weak of flesh. The son of the king's second wife was dim-witted yet charming and quite gifted in the art of war. Which prince would succeed the throne? When news came down that the king had died in battle, the two men each declared themselves the next true king rallying the people to take the side of one or the other. In the midst of, his, of this coronation battle, a third man appeared claiming to be a prince. Bright, capable, and brave, he dispatched the two foolish brothers and went on to become a wise and just king beloved by all. Decades later, the king announced on his deathbed that he wasn't royalty at all, but in fact was the son of a commoner. Upon hearing this revelation, the people stormed the castle and hung their beloved ruler from the rafters. I think this one's really, I, I mean, I'm not sure this has much uh, relevance to uh, the way we think about society today. Because, uh, you know, we don't really have uh, too much succession or like a, there's hardly any monarchies left in the world anymore. Uh, at least not in the medieval sense. We certainly have our own kind of uh, infinite uh, le leads of countries, heads of state, that uh, certainly seem like they're forming uh, political families, uh, heritage political families, just because of where the family invests their education and their efforts over time. Um, but I guess uh, to a certain extent, I think uh, it's just a general lesson about um, how easily people can be fooled when they are uh, focused in on a, a, a single goal. Um, and also about the, uh, again, about how people can get tired of war. They lose track of their values uh, in a state of war and eventually something will cause war to end, uh, whether it be uh, in co uh, coinciding with the society's values or not. Um, and I guess in this case, when they found out that the ruler was not in fact the person that he said he was, they do something utterly pointless, like uh, killing a man on his deathbed, hanging a man who's already on his deathbed, just because they feel betrayed and they want to stick to old and antiquated social structures, just because they value those structures, even though what was resulting from them, namely the war between the two brothers and the damage it was causing to society, uh, was harmful to the society, was not helping anyone. Uh, but I suppose we can move on to the Type 40 Lance story. Hi guys, it's me, 42S, your favorite Yorha Squadron Idol from North 12C Defense HQ. There are a lot of these squadron idols. Uh, I'm here with the latest hot scoops from the front line, so let's get out there and do our best, all right? Go team! Hey ho, Battlefield buddies, I'm not gonna lie here. The current war situation isn't looking too optimistic but we're expecting reinforcements from our orbiting satellite bases any moment. So don't give up yet. Glory to mankind. Mayday, mayday, this is Publicity Agent 42S from North 12C Defense HQ. Is anyone listening? Our facility has been completely surrounded by machines. I don't know how much longer we can hold. No Ross Gas from this channel. No broadcast anymore. Um, so, I, I mean, this might be... Uh, I think this might be lore building. Uh... Because we've also heard about other orbiting satellite bases, of other uh, bases uh, on this planet that are fighting the android war. But they're slowly being exterminated um, from 
and being abandoned by the other structures of the and android fighting force, uh, the other uh, orbiting bases are being destroyed, uh, these uh, different android operations are being destroyed, and it's all a part of Project Yorha, which is attempting to erase any sign of uh, the android program, uh, its relation to how uh, humans are no longer extant, that they're not on the moon, trying to preserve that idea of human uh, existence uh, through that, I guess you could call it a myth, a noble lie, perhaps. Um, but I guess I I'm kind of taking a moment to look at the image that's been used for these, uh, for these stories with the androids. And in this case... Uh, I think it's kind of appropriate because it's definitely a, a see no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil. Because we have both, we have the eyes covered like all the other Android models from Yorha, but the mouth is also covered and the hands are up, covering their ears over earphones. Uh, so it's definitely like uh, a sort of I'm ignoring the truth, I'm disengaging. Uh, trying to bury the truth so so as to protect or uh, maintain some ideal uh, and the result is obviously uh, not being able to maintain these structures that are meant to maintain simply because the violent suppression of the truth is not effective in doing that uh, the truth comes out eventually and uh, it kind of blows up in a big way in the main story. So let's move on to the Type 3 Lance. Uh, the unadorned Lance pierced her foes with machine-like accuracy. The grind of metal on bone in tandem with the pain screams of her victims created sweet music in the mercenary girl's ears. Day after day, she returned to the battlefield to compose more music. Here, a giant of a man, fat rippling from his sides, there a slimmer gentleman, whose bones would surely produce a sweeter sound. Ah, who to stab first? The girl thought for an age, stabbing unaccountable foes in an effort to find the ideal scream. That sonorous, bone-grinding sound, yet perfection eluded her no matter how hard she tried. Would she ever find what she sought? Suddenly she turned to find a fine-looking hunk of meat at her side. Stabbing it produced a scream so pure she couldn't help but smile. She continued to smile as she stabbed, no longer able to recall that the hunk was her own child. Ah, super dark. Uh, I, I don't know how much to take from that. Uh, I mean, it's kind of similar to the other ultra-violent short stories that the weapon stories have had, where it's just like, I've gone crazy with violence. I'm super in love with violence. And I've already talked on this point. Uh, I feel like I've belabored it a little bit in previous episodes. Violence is tempting. You can get stuck in it. You can really uh, be uh, overcome by uh, this idea that you can just uh, control outcomes and uh, with violent acts. And it can turn into a really sick pleasure for people. Uh, and you want to avoid... I guess I could also mention that it's probably, philosophically speaking, tangentially related to um, Hannah Arendt uh, and her philosophy. Uh, she's definitely a figure to look up if you are wanting to uh, explore some of the darker, uh, more violent themes of human nature uh, in a philosophical way. Though Hannah Arendt herself definitely didn't... Uh, think of herself as a philosopher. Uh, at the time, philosophers were really being put under scrutiny. Um, it was a really harsh time after World War II. People were seeking justice and punishment. Uh, and, and no one wanted to think that normal people could be capable of such horrible things. And Hannah Arendt, unfortunately, uh, wanted to say, no, look, here is a very practical, a very... Uh, easy to understand demonstration of just a regular guy doing absolutely horrible things in the name of a horrible ideology which came out out of completely normal circumstances that we simply didn't 
uh, we didn't engage with. We didn't form a dialogue and we didn't try to restrict it before things got out of hand. Uh, but uh, around this time was also the start, uh, well, not the start, but the, a major modern push for uh, depicting philosophy as impractical and unhelpful to understanding the real world. So she herself was saying, I'm definitely not a philosopher. This is not philosophy. Uh, but what ended up coming out was actually a very, uh, very philosophical depiction of uh, human nature, looking at factors as first principles and trying to derive further conclusions from it. So let's get into virtuous dignity, one of four special uh, you know, weapons you can find in shrines in the game. And this will probably be the last one for this video. The elegant white spear was crafted by a tyrant as a gift for his wife, whose parents he had killed years earlier. Okay. Uh, she slipped it under the bed they shared, then later used it to run him through 30 times. The spear's second owner was a courageous bandit fighting mayor. That's, uh, sounds like its own setup for a game. In her later years, her strength faded until one night a pack of young thugs surrounded her and took all that she had, including her life. The third owner was a greedy merchant who lived to swindle customers. Soon she found herself shunned and penniless, and so decided to hang herself. The unused spear rests in a corner of her home as a decoration. The fourth owner was a meek young boy who wanted to aid his sickly young sister. He gave all, he gave all to this cause, including his very existence. And that of all else, uh, sorry, including his very existence and that of all else in the world. Uh, that, that's some awkward fra phrasing at the end. He gave, he gave all to this cause, including his very existence and that of all else and all else in the world. Uh, awkward. But, I mean, I get what it's saying. Um, I kind of feel like this, I mean, this weapon wasn't in the original Nier, but that last one kind of sounds like a reference to the original Nier game, just because if you play Nier Replicant, uh, the Japanese version, you play as Yona's older brother rather than uh, Yona's dad. And, of course, we all know that uh, pulling a Nier means that at the very end of the game, uh, if you make a certain series of decisions, you will have all of your save data, your very existence as a player character erased from the world uh, in order to uh, pursue this cause, to uh, bring order and peace to uh, this situation of the world and how it happened to collide with uh, just the simple desire to be a family. Um, I would say... To a certain extent, uh, the rest of the story might be, uh, I guess, depicting how uh, violence can come in many different shades that, uh, to a certain extent, uh, I, I mean, I guess in the first one, we're seeing uh, violence being suffered externally and thus seeking revenge externally. Uh, the second one is uh, using violence in the name of good, uh, but such vigilantism uh, ultimately resulting in one's own downfall because at the end of the day you're still harming people, you're still causing pain and creating grudges, creating revenge. And so this uh, bandit fighting mayor got uh, overrun and killed by thugs because of her th because the threat she uh, posed and the last person didn't uh, use the spear at all uh, but uh, because uh, she was so hostile uh, towards other people taking advantage of them the violence eventually turned inward uh, and you don't need like and I guess to a certain extent it's describing how not all violence comes in the form of attack, comes in the form of uh, weaponry and fighting. It can uh, come in mindsets, it can come in beliefs, it can be self-wrought by alienating people 
with selfish pursuits. Um, but I suppose uh, that's all we're going to do for today. Uh, I'm not going to get to Cruel Arrogance and Machine Spear, but I mean, we got through four of them. That's pretty good, I think. Uh, and this time for our outro, I don't have for us any kind of fight, but I do have an elevator ride. And I am going to kind of get an up personal close. Wow, that was a really short elevator ride. I'm pretty sure I have auto chips on. Why don't we just explode? That'll be fun. Oh wait, hold on. A2 doesn't explode. She goes into rage mode. Look at rage mode. Big rage mode. I'm Oh, I'm gonna die in the air. This is bad. Oh no. Okay, auto chip still. Oh wait, Pod is using recovery items. Wow, okay. I probably should have paid more attention to that. Um, I thought uh, I was going to just kind of fall. Oh well, I suppose I should say the YouTube things now, right? All right, so first YouTube thing is hit the like button. Make sure to uh, boost this video if you did enjoy it, if you've gotten this far. Uh, boost the video for the algorithm. That like button really determines uh, how quickly they show this video to other possibly interested eyes. Um, and it's the best way, right now at least, for uh, more exposure to happen. Uh, also, give me a comment if you have anything to say. I think the themes of the different weapon stories are starting to uh, become more consistent, self-referential, uh, and a little repetitious, um, but hopefully we'll see something new in a little bit. Uh, and make sure to share it around with your friends on all that social media. Uh, I hope to see you next time. Uh, there's going to be another video next week, as always, something different than this. Uh, but thank you again, and remember, stay true.